How are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good now. <laughs> um, you know, we, we had a four-year relationship yeah. and we were in love. I fell in love with him right from the beginning and I think he did with me too. And what we had was very real. Um, breaking up with him was probably the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. Probably even worse than the divorce because I really met him at a time when I needed somebody to listen and to, you know, just to be there for me. I, had, I was going through so much um, and he was there and we had a great lifestyle. He was young, yes, you know, he was in between Brooke and Nick's age, which I didn't know at first. He said that he was older. Ah. And then we went out for a drink and he went like, uh, I gotta tell you something. I said, okay, you're 19? Okay, as long as you're not lying about 19, you're not really 16, we're good. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it was just a rush, you know, I never dreamed I'd be dating somebody that young and it just turned out and it was, it was so fun. Uh, you know, I was addicted to it. And I think it scared my mom because she thought that I had gone off the deep end completely. And my kids were, you know, be, to be honest, they really didn't know what to think, but my husband was probably very envious and maybe a little jealous. And I think that it was just a natural reaction for a husband to say, you know, what's your mom doing? Has she lost her marbles? Yeah, I don't like that guy. What's going on with that, you know? It's okay if he can have his lifestyle, but I wasn't allowed to have mine. Yes, he did live here with me, and he worked very hard around here. I mean, he helped me with everything. He was just an amazing person to just, boy, he's hands-on, that he could fix anything, he could do anything, and he was huge to help me here, getting set up. But when we decided to um, go our own ways, it was pretty much an um, amicable decision because, you know, he really needed to kind of grow and find his own friends and his own, um, you know, have his own apartment and have mm -hmm. his own life and figure out how to do it. You know, none of this was his. And, I think that it's probably, as a man, for a man, it's important that they can, you know, support mm -hmm. a woman or at least have something that they can bring to the table too. And so I think he deserved that chance. And as hard as it was for us to separate, I think we both know that it's for the best. A big part of it was the public perception, the flack that I was taking from my family and from my kids originally when we first met. Um, it puts a lot of head trip on you. And I think that was the reason that we went on couples therapy is because celebrities are misunderstood. They don't reveal a lot about their personal lives. And, um, you know, why is it that their marriages are just flash in the pants? You know, I mean, why is it that the celebrity relationships just come and go so quickly? Mm -hmm. You know, they think that these people have no core, but we do. And what the public persona says does affect us. And it did affect us greatly. And so it was good to actually be on national television and be able to bring people through what we experienced together as a couple. And, you know, you decide for yourself. What is life like for you now? It seems like you don't harbor any resentment because upstairs you have a picture of, of Hulk and the family. I do. Well, you know, we had a great relationship. I mean, for 24 years, we rocked and rolled. We had everything. We had their jets, yeah. money, cars, trips, travel, you know, kids, field trips. You know, I mean, I had it all. Yeah. And it was a heck of a lifestyle. And Hulkster was a heck of a husband for the most part. You know, I just kind of probably, if I would have to say, I. I may have known that it was going on or that when things happen, they happen, but you know, you realize that when you pull the plug on something like that, you're pulling the plug on a lot of other people, not just yourself. And I just felt it's just was never the right time to just, you know, I mean, corporations, companies, yeah. product lines, kids, schools, friends, homes. I mean, that's, it's a trickle effect. And in our situation, he was really big and it would have been a humongous fall. So I, I just stayed the course. So you said your mom's a decorator too, so she yes. helped you with this? Uh-huh, she did. She's into the country uh, look, and she's been a decorator for 30 years, and uh, I'm a Chipotle block, I'm uh -huh. proud to say. You are. But I love the country stuff. I just feel it's warm and cozy. and. Mm -hmm. It's just stunning. Thank you. It is just the stunning. view is what sold me on this mm -hmm. and just that it'll never change. It's just always, I have to have all these gates up. I know it looks like I have a, a preschool, but I kind of do. <laughs> preschool <laughs> 13 <and> dogs. dogs. <laughs> oh, and the Bally infinity you. pool. Yeah, How this was fabulous. a huge selling point too. I, I just saw the pool. At first you don't see it and then you see it and it's like, oh, it looks like a Las Vegas resort. <laughs> I'm all in. It does. Because how much time do you spend out here? I lo well, we just kind of finished all the patio and stuff around it. So now a lot. I, mm -hmm. Oh, I love it. I'm a sun freak. You You're going to have to get another good, man to hang out with you out here. Somebody to bring me my martinis. Oh, pool boy. You're my, <laughs> you're my tie and your martinis. Look at you and your fluorescent yellow skirt. 
with the chickens. I know. There's some that are really friendly. Your, your nails, your fresh manicure, your Dior bracelets, your yellow <laughs> skirt, and she's holding a chicken. <laughs> they're really smart and they're super sweet and people just don't really know how nice chickens are for pets. How, how many do you have? 14. And a rooster. One rooster. One. They were all baby fluffy things and one turned out to be a rooster. So, so you're just an animal person. Yeah, I am. But a meat eater? They're sweet. Yeah. I, <laughs> Wow. <laughs> we don't want you to get away. My heart. Oh, my heart. Okay. <laughs> that scared me to death. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so this is going to be the recording studio. Okay. And I'm making it look like um, an old lodge inside. It's going to have a big stone fireplace inside. And then um, I have to have Nick come and set up the uh, engineering section. But it'll be on this wall. And there'll be a vocal booth in there. Because, you know, they're into music. That's what they do. So it'll be for Brooke and for Nick. For yep. Nick and his DJing and Party his music. Party room and, you know, the recording stuff and all the facilities. Brooke can record in here. And they can, they can come home and they can still have what they love to do. Mm -hmm. So 